So our mechanism plate. We've got five blades of course. The blades are all the same with the exception of the first blade. And the first blade, which is that one, is has an extra hole in it to identify it. And that's the blade that needs to go in first. Now I've never been entirely sure why they would have bothered doing that because the blades are otherwise identical. And why you need to particularly mark the first blade and not the second, third, fourth or fifth blade is one of life's mysteries. But then I didn't design the shutter. So our blades are off. Let's turn this over. The spring here is already off. This spring returns the blade actuating ring and in this case that blade actuating ring is very very stiff very reluctant to move oh yeah so that shutter would have been very sticky anyway we've unhooked that spring we can undo this screw from this that holds that arm on something there was quite stiff take that arm off and that, I'm just moving that manually there, and I can tell you that this is very stiff. It's got a gummy feel to it, like uh, dried grease or something. That should be dry, and it should feel relatively dry. There are four screws hold this plate in place. Typically they are fixed with uh, a little bit of some sort of compound, it's either Loctite or some predecessor to Loctite. They're very hard to move usually. Usually it's red. I see a little tiny bit on there. Three of these screws are the same length. One of them is longer. I'm going to get rid of the short ones first. I'm keeping a lot of downward pressure on my screwdriver when I turn it to get these screws out. They tend to be very tight and easily damaged, so you don't want to slip your screwdriver out of them. This will be the longer screw. Take our plate off. I'm looking at it to see if there's anything obviously funny about it. Nothing particularly remarkable. It does show a bit of polish mark there where the blade actuating ring has been running. Um, but I don't know whether that's significant. Here's the blade actuating ring. Its job as it swings backwards or forwards is it swings, shifts the blades. The blades have a fixed pivot point. This is the moving pivot point. As it swings, the blades swing around their fixed pivot point and swing out of the light path. And the body or the mechanism plate itself it doesn't look particularly remarkable it doesn't even look particularly dirty. Where that blade actuating ring runs around here I suspect that there's a bit of grease or dirt there. This is the retard gear train. You can remove it from the mechanism plate to clean it, but that's a bit fraught and I don't do it. I clean it on the plate. I certainly find that's the best thing to do because if you disturb the position of this retard gear train on the mechanism plate, you have a hell of a job getting your speeds right afterwards. It can be moved in and out at either end of the rack of the mechanism and one end vaguely controls slow speeds, one does the higher speeds, but they interact. And it can take you a long time to get to the point where a tenth of a second is a tenth of a second and a twenty-fifth of a second is a twenty-fifth of a second and not the other way around. Right, set to cleaning this shutter up. Let's carry, 
carry on and see what we can do. So the mechanism plate is what I'm dealing with here. And the blade actuating ring was very gummy, didn't want to rotate smoothly on here. Or it rotated smoothly enough, but there was a lot of resistance. So I'm going to clean that surface up. And clean that blade actuating ring. And I'm yet to see any serious problem with it to explain why it didn't want to move smoothly. So having cleaned that, I'll just pop it into position and I'll see if there's any obvious problem and there certainly isn't. That seems to move backwards and forwards without any stickiness or undue resistance. So we'll deal with this plate. This holds the blade actuating ring in place. It also holds that ratchet wheel there, which forms, what am I looking at here? I'm trying to remember what that part actually does. Is that a ratchet wheel for a, yes, that forms part of the flash. That's part of the sink mechanism. The pins visible on this plate are the fixed pivots for the shutter blades. So the shutter blades pivot around those points. Well that came up fairly cleanly. That didn't really show any obvious stickiness. Let's get this plate back in place. Screw it down and check it again. See what it's like. Of course you'd have taken great notice of where the longer of the three screws came from to make sure it goes back in the right position. Check that each of the four screws are done up tight. And that blade actuating ring moves smoothly. No hint of drag there. So there was some contaminant that I didn't notice was causing that problem. And something that cleaned away very easily. So the prime suspect remains grease or oil or something of that nature. Yeah. This lever, I normally put a wipe of molybdenum on the pivot and in this slot where it picks up the pin on that blade actuating ring and shifts it backwards and forwards. Its screw head's got a bit of a funny look to it, like it uh, may have a 
bit of oil or grease on it itself. I'm just going to check that. We'll give it a clean. That wouldn't account for the blade actuating ring itself being gummy, but it might make a difference to the speed that this component can shift at. That's nice and free. That's exactly as it should have been. And it's very snappy in its action. So our blade actuating ring is good, and it's good to go. We still haven't cleaned all, all the surfaces on this thing because, well, as I, as I was saying before, I, before I was rudely interrupted by a flat battery in that camera, we've still got to do a bit more cleaning on this uh, mechanism plate. So I've got to clean out any old grease from around this surface of the mechanism plate, and then I'll need to turn my attention. There's a fair bit of grease visible there. It's not particularly dirty, but it has no business being there either. And I've got to turn my attention to cleaning the retard gear train. And we can do that about now, I think. As I was saying earlier, I do not remove the retard gear train from the shutter mechanism plate to clean it. Normally I clean it in place with a little bit of solvent and work it numerous times to make sure that any contaminants on the surfaces, the working surfaces, are all washed away. I'm holding that plate at an angle while I was doing that so any oils or dirt will run away to the bottom not run back into the blade actuating ring that we've just spent five minutes cleaning I'll just check the action of the retard gear train if we lift the pallet slightly It certainly runs down promptly and smoothly. Let's try it slower. That sounded good. It was very even, very smooth. A few fingerprints on the top of that, and I'm not sure whether they were mine or somebody else's. If they were somebody else's, they'll be etched in there because they'd be very, very old. I'm going to lubricate. Just going to move this into the sun a bit. And it might reduce my contrast by moving everything onto that darker mat. And I'll bring back the paper to work on when I need it. Just moved around to the sun. The sun's just moved around. It's quite bright here at the moment. I'm going to lubricate my retard gear train with a little bit of graphite powder. Now the graphite powder is mostly lubricating the working surfaces of the teeth of the gears there really, where they run over each other. That runs very nicely. I'm 
I'll do the same for that blade actuating ring. And I'll work that in. And blow all the excess out. In an ideal world, you would probably have some other lubricant there, but most lubricants are oils, and the problem with oils is they don't stay where they're put. Everything should work nice and snappily on that mechanism plate now. It does, and our retard gear train, oops, getting caught on the end of a spring there. Runs out nice and smoothly. Turn my attention to these blades. These need to be swabbed clean. Once I've cleaned them with a bit of lighter fluid, I'll have a better idea of the state of them, whether they show any serious staining or corrosion. And I have to say they look pretty good. Now that looks good. I'm going to uh, reassemble the blades, put them back in place, and we can close this shutter up. So, first, I'll see if I can refocus this. We want to zoom in a bit. Right, that looks like that'll work there. So, I need to unhook the spring from the blade actuating ring lever and pull the blade actuating ring around so it's at the position where the shutter blades will be fully open and then put the blades in place. One of the blades had an extra hole in it which was put there to identify blade number one and blade number one it's here. And something stuck on that blade. What is that? Excuse me while I deal with that little contaminant. Mm. 
No, don't know what that was. It's a tiny fleck of something that was stuck on there. It's gone now. Back. Ah, that was a thread of glue. And I presume that came off that piece of paper. Alright, there's our blades sitting neatly in place and we can put the shutter case on top now. Of course we're to line up the correct position. The easiest way to tell that you've got the correct position is from that square hole there. With the okay, so we need to get the case on here and the easiest way to line this up is to note that square cut out where the flash contact goes. And I've got this sitting on the edge of the block rather than the middle of the block because of the aperture setting lever protrudes out the front. Now we want the screws for this. There are three screws for the case. And I'll run one screw in. And then we'll check that everything's in place. Turn it over. Check that the blades swing back into place. Hook our spring back over that lever. And that's nice and snappy in action. So now I can put the other two screws in and tighten them all down. And one of them is hiding. Where's it gone? Yeah. To get all three screws in and seated, then tighten them up. It's nice and snappy, that's good. Right, so our flash sink post. There's the earth contact goes on the plate there and our plastic flash sink contact here this is the fixed contact now there should be a the plastic insulating slug that should be in here is missing it's a little tiny piece of plastic less than a millimeter in diameter and about a millimeter in it or so long it's it's not there now that tells me that, I was sure I didn't lose it, that tells me that the screw was probably biting directly on here, on that wire, and it was by the looks of it. That means that that flash terminal was effectively earthed out. There should have been an insulator between this and the screw that clamps it. That means that the flash couldn't have worked on this camera. Um, it has simply just not been operational. And that would date from the time the shutter was previously serviced, I would think. So I'll get that flash contact in place. We're going to have to 
or I am going to have to make a new plastic slug as the insulator in there. Fortunately I have some plastic which is just the right diameter and when you cut off the little piece, they're about a millimetre and a half long or so, it looks just like the original and does the same job. Okay, well that's one of the last things we do anyway, that plastic slug, so it doesn't need to slow us down at all. We have some other components we need to get in place. These are other, the other flash components and for the flash sink. Our high speed spring for the 150th, 1 500th of a second. That's enough fits to be going on with. Right. So I'm going to clean those parts first, and I'm just chasing the sun around here, so I'll just move back into the shade a bit, I think. Just trying to avoid the high contrast. I'll clean these components with cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud, and I'll just swab the components to make sure that I lift off any old grease, dust, dirt, or other contaminants. Particular care around geared teeth like this to make sure there's nothing trapped in the teeth. Um, dirt or grit that gets impacted between the teeth could stop that from working. All right. So this little cam drops onto the shaft there. Where's that pallet? I'll just cover it over with something. There it is, hiding. That little pallet goes on here. Let's see if I can get this centered up a bit better. We're just drifting off camera here. As this wheel rotates, it spins this little pallet wheel here, which rattles this pallet backwards and forwards. That effectively gives it the mechanical delay which is necessary to delay the opening of the shutter after the flash has been fired when set to the M setting. Now our flash contact here has these two components. Where are we? These two components one is the moving flash contact, one is the lever that moves it, and that needs to be threaded through underneath there. And these are always fun to get back together if they've come apart. That's better.
this spring is the 500th of a second speed spring and it just provides extra impetus to the blade actuating ring when it's engaged to speed the shutter up so it can actually achieve something like the 500th of a second speed that they advertise and which is probably more like a 400th of a second in reality so that's sitting there in place and we should have a small screw to hold that in position and it was here it's rolled off my piece of paper oh look I'm having fun here not only is that component come apart into two pieces it's actually come apart into three because it's spring has come adrift time for me to do some tidy up and find the missing component